All right, guys, we're back on the Kevin and Fred show, and uh, I'm excited for today's guest. Uh, my friend Crystal Hughes is joining us. Crystal, what's going on, girl? Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that we're getting the chance to uh, to record this podcast together. Me too. You've done a lot with this community and with your podcast and in the real estate industry, and I just have a lot of respect for you. So I'm excited for this conversation. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I love having conversations and uh, things that will help people in our world. I don't know what it is. I just, uh, I think I've got yeah. much from other realtors and people in the, in the industry and that I just want to share that with other people. So, so you're, one my, you're one of my favorite people. And so I want to share Same. with everybody. Um, so Crystal, let's do this. Yeah. Tell everyone who's Crystal Hughes. Let's just start there for a second. <laughs> Who is Crystal? Yeah. That's right. Such a character. Yes. So I grew up in a little town called Wenatchee, Washington. You ever been there on purpose? No. Uh, I'm a yeah, no. Can't even heard of it. No. Yeah. Well, if you blink a few times, you might miss the town. But uh, we're a town of 50,000 people and uh, 500 realtors. So 10% of the town, you know, everybody had an Aunt Kathy and a realtor friend named Steve. So uh, I was... Um, Gosh, I was raised in the entrepreneurial stereotype of a trailer park. Grew up in, yep, yeah, grew up in a trailer park. And uh, when I was six years old, my sister was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And she was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma. And in 1992, she went through what was called a stem cell harvest transplant. And so stem cell research was very controversial, you know, back then even. Uh. And 10 people went through this this treatment. And unfortunately only two people survived. And my sister was one of them. Wow. And right. And so at six years old, I realized proximity leverage and how you can use humor to disarm people just with smiles in a room. And I remember I, to this day, I can clearly remember the picture memory that I created of just seeing the sadness of the looks of people's faces and they were all waiting for the news. Like, were their children going to make it at Children's Hospital out, out of this, this treatment okay? And so I looked over at my mom, proximity, saw that she was close to me, and then leverage. And I said, hey, why don't you tell everybody that there's a comedy show? And I invited them to a comedy show. And I did a comedy show for everybody. And I make people laugh. At six years old. At six. Um. Wow. Okay. So that's, that is a heck of a, that's a, that's a heck of a way, heck of a way to start. So you're, I want to, how do you think that impacted you? And in, in, so you mentioned, you mentioned like entrepreneurial, Yeah. Uh, obviously we know where comedy came into play. How do you think that yeah. impacted your career once you found real estate? And I, and I would like to talk about like how you even found real estate. For yeah. One. Yeah. So it's good. We'll get there with that. So absolutely. I think that's great. So with that, it allowed me to to step on stage and get in theater and learn how to speak and communicate with people. And it later served me in life to to have my own TV show called At Home with NCW Life. So I produced the show. I was the host and I interviewed real estate agents. And that later gave me kind of a platform to feel confident to step in front of people and to communicate and to pick up the phone and to give confidence to be light and have humor with them, but also care enough about them and to say, Hey, I want to have a good time with you, but I also want to help you reach your goals. So That's that, awesome. yeah. So when, and when did that come into play? Oh, when did I become a real estate agent? Yeah. Well, well when, I, want, I want to talk about that too, but like when yeah. did the show that you, when you started that, uh, that was in 20, right before the pandemic, then it hit. And then it was supposed to be an in-person, you know, I had my own TV show. Yeah. So then we figured out, you know, this local small television show, how to do it online. So we ended up doing 55 episodes of at home with NCW life. Wow. In 2021. Yeah. And then at the same time in, in the produced, same year, hold on. I got, cause like, yeah. this is fascinating crystal. Hold on. Yes. You yeah. produced it. Like you so I, I was the, I created the content. So I was the writer, I okay. was the host and I directed the show and I got the, the guests on the show, but I had a producer. I had my own TV. So I was the only one actually in the television station that had my own TV set and a producer, my own producer. That's how do you, how, how does that even come into play? We'll talk about real estate, going back to getting in real estate in a moment, but like, how do you even get to that point where you can convince uh, I don't know, a TV station or whoever, like a producer, et cetera, 
to go, Hey, this is a good idea. Like, where does that even come from? And then how do you get them to say, yeah, like I got to hear how that, how that came to be. You know, I think that it's important that we stay creative, right. In our, in, in our industry, in our careers that we stay creative. And so I was, I write a lot and I'm journaling and I'm thinking, where is the need right now in our industry, especially like right before the pandemic hit was how could I for free basically, and get paid? How could I do something where I get a return on it, where I invest my time and I get more information out to the community. And so it was all things home and real estate for our community. So I found a need and said, how can I be creative and have fun? And created a TV show and lights, camera, action, one, two, three, literally within 30 days, we had an entire set. And so I presented it to the board and they were like, who are you? And I was like, oh, I'm a local real estate agent. Like, oh yeah, did some research. And they said, let's put it on. And we had the most sponsors uh, in a couple month period that they had had in their entire uh, being existence of being open. People wanted to be on their, the, the TV show. They wanted their ads on the TV show. That's pretty cool. And so- yeah. Okay, going back to to real estate. So you got licensed in what, 2013? Did I hear that right? Yeah, I was licensed in 2013. Um, and what originally brought me to that was, well, I was very entrepreneurial. So when my sister was sick, um, I was eight years old. She got cancer again, okay? So I was eight. And so I really wanted a bicycle. And so I was like, how can I get a bicycle? And so I asked my mom, I said, I, I want a bicycle. And she said, find someone who needs help and go help them. And so I created a lawn mowing business and my stepdad helped me. I found five clients in need and I had five clients and I mowed their lawn. And uh, there was an old lady at the end of the road, at the end of the trailer park where I lived. Her name was Vivian and she was bedridden. And I would go in and I'd listen to her sing Christian songs and I'd hold her hand and I'd mow their lawn. And uh, my stepdad would help me collect the payments. And so I knew at that point in time that I kind of had like a business mindset, right? And uh, for my birthday that year, I ended up, we were going to go for my birthday, take the money I had made and take the money that from my birthday and go buy a bicycle. But Vivian actually had gifted me the bicycle. Um, she didn't get to see me get it gifted to me at the park because she was in her bed. But that was like really like, wow. you know, if you like work hard and just help people, you can uh, get the things that you desire. So uh, my grandparents, they were um, a flight. They were in flight. They were, my grandpa was an airplane pilot and my grandma was a flight attendant. And they worked for Wien Air Alaska, okay? And so they were, it was actually one of the very first airlines in the United States and also the first in Alaska. And in 1984, it shut down and I was born in 86. Well, my grandparents moved to Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, okay? So I got to go down there and spend summers. And for real estate for me, it was nostalgic. It had a smell and a feeling for my roots. So go grow up in a trailer park, but I, I go down and I visit my grandparents who actually have money and it smells like success and they had a pool. Okay. So my grandpa throws me into the pool. That's how he teaches me how to swim. He's like, come here, come here, kid. I'm not going to throw you in. Throws me in. That's kind of how I like do things now in life. So throws me in. <laughs> the house smells new, but when I was 13 years old, they retired and they moved back. They moved to Washington. And so I got to live near them and they bought a brand new house and they had it built. And they bought a brand new Toyota Camry and Toyota pickup. And so everything smelled new. And I remember having watching them, like just having this like feeling of, wow, this house is being built. It's so beautiful. You can have anything you want if you work hard enough. And so when my grandmother re retired, she actually became a real estate assistant and she was a real estate photographer. So I got to drive around in her brand new Toyota Camry and they live right near a country club and a golf course. And so she would put flyers and take pictures of these beautiful homes and I get to go with her. And she worked for Laura Mounter Real Estate. And Laura Mounter was the classiest, most you know successful woman in town and had horses and all the properties and everything. And so my dream someday was to work for Laura Mounter. Um, but I was at the time I was uh, 24 years old and I was living in the Seattle area and I was going to the UW Bothell and I worked at a high-end cocktail dub pub. It was called the dub pub. It was a Husky themed football bar. Okay. Um, by the way, my first game was Dallas, was a, was a Dallas Cowboys game in the fourth grade. Uh, and I was the coolest kid because I had a starter's jacket and like, that was like the nicest thing I ever owned. Okay. So yeah. And like people beat me up in the trailer park over it, but anyway, it's cool. So, <laughs> so 24 years old and living in Seattle and I get this call from this lady and she's like, Hey, I have a couple few quarters left of college. And she's like, I am going to retire in one year. I'm getting out of the real estate industry and I need an assistant. And by the end, you'll have your real estate license. I'll pay for you to move back over here. And I just need someone. So she was a brand new construction specialist. So we literally, I learned real estate from the ground up. 
development. Um, we even designed the homes, new construction. So a year later, I had my license. I got to go hang my license somewhere. So Laura Mountain Real Estate. <laughs> that is awesome. So what, 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 so tell me like when you, when you think back to that time, um, cause I know that you, I mean, you've had a lot of success in real estate along the way. Like what are, what are some of the maybe lessons or, uh, experiences that were most impactful to you that you still think about today? Yeah. So right when I joined, I, when I got my license, I sold, went pending on 18 homes and I was rookie of the year and I joined the board of directors and I was on the event planning and I was so, so busy. And I think one of the things that was most impactful for me was getting to help open a Keller Williams franchise and learning how the hot dogs were made and getting to see kind of like the ins and outs of running a business, if you will, yeah. um, for lack of better terms. And really learning the process and how you can run a business at a high level and what that takes to, to get agents. Um, but it also was for me, there was, I held a position after we helped open a, a KW office. I was a team leader and I thought that, go ahead. It's a hard position. It's a hard position. It's hard. And so to your question of like something that was like in, in the industry that is like, I got this team leader position and we were supposed to recruit like 10 a month. Right. And I think that month I had recruited like six or seven and they're like, okay, well, you didn't quite meet the quota. We're making some moves around in leadership. And so, um, we're going to move you to like this armpit of Washington and you can be a productivity coach. And I was like, you know what? It's, it's not about the title. It's not about the leadership, but you know, I, I felt like I had failed and I felt like publicly, like people were, you know, it was like, detrimental to, to my life and my career. And actually it turned out that it was like one of the most positive things for me to learn about who I was and what I really wanted. So I went back into a production full-time at that time. It was back in uh, 2019 and I went back into production full-time after selling real estate. And I think for me realizing, okay, there's a ceiling in le some leadership positions when you're getting paid a salary and, and some models. And for me to go, okay, where do I need to go ultimately? Like what's going to best serve Crystal and the people around her? And so I went back and worked on my leadership and my real estate skills. And I was like, I'm going to get really good at real estate again and help a lot of people so that I can be a better leader in the future. And maybe it wasn't about the numbers or the goals. I just was like, I'm going to work on me. And so I did that. And you know what, Kevin, I wouldn't be here today at EXP. Had I not taken that productivity coaching position, I probably wouldn't be here. When you say like you go back and work on those skills, can you be be a little granular for me? Like give me, give sure. me because I think a lot of us have a moment, whether it's a moment of like what we feel like is failure in the moment, or we just know that, hey, like there's something missing. I need to, yeah. I, I need to work on X. Like I can remember, I know for me, I remember the moment. I remember these two specific moments in 2000 and 12 and beginning of 2013, where I was like, okay, this is like make or break moment. At least it felt like it for me. Yeah. What are some things that you did granularly to go back and sort of work on those skills? Uh, yeah. so you could be a better realtor. And then ultimately now, like, and we'll get to it, like, obviously you coach and inspire a lot of other people to mm -hmm. do the same, but like, what are some of those things that you did? Yeah. So I started going to a lot more of the classes, um, taking courses. I took, um, I did the success coaching certification. So that really helped me through EXP to learn what leadership looks like from an objective perspective. Um, and I think it starts with us, like we're our own first case study, right? So yeah. that we can help yeah, other yeah. people. Um, I went back to like, what did the baby realtor crystal need? So I kind of started essentially from the beginning and built up my database and made sure it was organized. And um, they said, uh, James Clear, right? He says like, we fall to the level of our systems, right? And so, um, and Ben Kinney says, you know, we're five to seven systems away from going to the next level. So I really put systems in place, like a hiring a VA, hiring an assistant, um, and hiring a coach and a therapist. And then I, I knew that I needed to work out regularly, like working out and working on me and reading and doing a podcast. Um, and then I actually, in 2018, 
18, I got my yoga certification. And so I help people um, with grief yoga as well. So I help people through the grieving process and I practice breathing and yoga. And so I think that that for me helped me develop my skills as a person to help others. I have a few friends that have gotten yoga certifications, different time. Hadn't heard of grief before. Mm -hmm. it, like it's a long, it's a harder process to become a yoga teacher than it is to get a real estate license. But it's really Correct. weird to think about it. Like, how do you think that helps you? And how do, like, how does that translate to maybe, and maybe it's just in the coaching business or maybe it's with the buyers and sellers that you still, you know, that, that you work with, et cetera. Like where, like, where is that showing up for you? I'm curious. Yeah. So one of the things as teachers is it's about being present and it's also about like seeing and hearing people. Like, I think that we all have this natural, like in-depth need to be seen and heard. And so, you know, namaste is in yoga means like, I see you. And so I think that that has really helped me to see my clients, meet them where they're at, really listen and be present. And one of the things is like in yoga, you can't go into the next move if there's pain. And pain is our friend. And so it tells us like maybe where we need to give grace or if there's resistance. And so in the real estate industry, I'm like, okay, hold on. Let's take a second. If there's resistance in something, let's figure that out. Let's work on that. Let's give it some grace and dig, maybe even dig a little bit deeper and figure out where that the source is coming from. So I think that's really helped me to, to communicate and connect with my clients in a more presentful way. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I hadn't thought about that. Um, and I, I could see how that would be you know, beneficial for you, like in the business world, mm -hmm. um, outside of the yoga studio, for lack of a better word, if you will, sure. yeah. uh, how that, how that would show up for you. Okay. So you, so you went back, you started learning, like you took, you mentioned, you took the success coach coaching certification, which is a lot of work, uh, some yeah. course to get through did the yoga thing. Were there any other, I'm going to say courses, whether real estate specific or not, or exercises or classes and things that you went through that stand out to you that like made a big difference for you? And yeah. Development. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. There was a class that I went through. It was a year long. It was the Keller Williams master faculty program. And so every Thursday we met and we would come up with individual classes to teach and courses and was able to teach the millionaire real estate investor course, um, Cody Gibson, seven step to 10 listings, hosted several business planning clinics. I think one of the most successful courses I ever taught was the millionaire real estate investor course. It was 12 weeks long and it helped me get to know investors and realtors in town. Um, and so that was really where for me, I think a big shift of, I want to eventually honor my clients and continue selling real estate, but coaching and leading people and helping lead the leaders. So I, I love that too, that when you talk about teaching, like for me, one of the things I always think about, sorry, I've got something stuck in my eye. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, I, like I always think about like teaching is such to me is like the best way to actually learn. Yeah. I right. love like one of the reasons I do like teaching is because it allows me to, to further understand the thing I'm talking about, right? right. Or at least attempting to talk about. Yeah. Um, and so I, I love that. Um, I mean, going through like a training like that, like the master faculty thing, like that's not a it's not a small task. So like, that's like really taking on learning and, and teaching in a, in a major way. Uh, and so I, th I think that's awesome. And I think more realtors should teach more like number one, yeah. help them for selfishly to help them get better. And then number two, for, I think one of the reasons why you and I have always just connected is because to give back to like the community of realtors. Like I, I think it's that's right. such a small community and there's so much to give. There's really no secrets in real estate. Like there's no secrets. Yeah. To success. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, and we can like, we're not going to lose anything by, by giving away our secrets. Right. Like, no. we're, in fact, we're all going to make, we're all going to do more and be more by it. I believe, at least I believe that. I yeah. Know. There's such a need for it. Right. We can learn from other people and getting in rooms together, like, you know, ESP yeah. creates for us. I think that's so important, you know, and um, I learned, Master faculty was very similar to like the Toastmasters style and Toastmasters International. So I did a lot of that um, in my, my career as well, did one some pu best public speaker stuff. But I think for me, when I get out there and I'm vulnerable and I show up and I share my journey that uh, whether one person resonates with it. And like you said, you know, learning from 
our struggles. I think we learned so much. Um, you know, John Cheplak said it so best. He said, when you have the opportunity to connect with someone who has gone well before you and, and achieved a lot of things, ask them what their biggest struggle is, you know, so that you can kind of learn from that. Yeah. So it's funny you say that, like, I, um, uh, I think it was Tim Ferriss. I heard talking about this one time, like he talked about, cause he's obviously spoken to so many of the most successful people on the planet. And typically the number one learning experience they ever had, or the thing that they're most thankful for came out of the most painful thing and something that they would never wish on anybody mm -hmm. that they experienced. However, it turned out to be the best thing for them yeah. in, in the long run. And I think that's yeah. probably true and in, in just in life in general for everyone. Yeah, right. I think so. And I think that was what I meant earlier about the, that team leader position, right? It was that it was like some things are really at the time there is very temporary, but they may seem detrimental and can cause yeah. some, some after effects, right? Some lagging factors. But when you look back and you go, where was the gain? You know, who did I become in that process? And it can turn out to be the best thing. So I'm very grateful for that. Absolutely. So what's on, what's going on in Crystal's mind now? Like you and I, we, see each other often. So we've had maybe some of these conversations, but we're recording this. It's the end of October. This will be out sometime in November of 2022. Um, markets have changed and are still rapidly changing. Yeah. Like what are some things that are going on in your mind and maybe some of the conversations you're having with other realtors, both, uh, both where you're out in Southern California, uh, I get left that part out like from Washington, but in Southern California, or we haven't gotten to that point yet. And to, like some of the conversations you're having with other realtors out there, like what are some of the things you're thinking about real estate market wise? I, there's definitely obviously a huge shift and change, right? Everybody knows that's so obvious. And I think for me, the opportunity to help people who are in need, who are maybe feeling doubtful or fearful, I, the conversations are getting in front of each other to say, what is the best, what's the, the thing that you can do today to move the needle closer to help you get a, get a client today. Who can you help today? Right. So having those conversations, I think is about what skills can we learn today to help someone, whether that's in the short-term rental market, or it's getting really skilled at for sell by owners or even open houses right now. So I'm actually in the process of getting my San Diego license after nine plus years in real estate in Washington, my California license here. And so for me, it's going to be going into realizing that everything that we do in this, the next winter is going to affect our spring for yeah. 2023 and 2024, right? With interest rates going up, it's a matter of having conversations, I think, and going really deep with your people and your database. Because people still need to move, people still divorce, they have life changes, people die, they want to sell their rentals, right? So I think it's a matter of really right now we're having conversations about who do you need to be in front of and what do they need? What's their need and how can we help them with our skills? Right. And so I think it's, it's really the conversations are um, who's maybe selling three to five homes and it wants to sell more. Or if we're down 40%, I think right now is what I heard. Like something like 40% in mortgages and 18% or something like that across the country in sales. So we have to plan for, an 18 to maybe even 30% loss. So looking at our budget, it's like, okay, here we are, we're in winter. So I'm cutting back the excess fat. I'm doing 30 to 50% more of the activities that are necessary, lead gen, leaning in, and just really sharpening the skills and saying, who can I help today? Who needs my help? Yeah, so I saw a buddy of mine uh, made a post today. Uh, basically, the, the, the gist of it was like, number one rule in business is to stay in business. Yeah. It's just so easy when things go up and down while they're on the up to forget that it's actually going to go down again for whatever. It's like human mm -hmm. nature, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it will go down again. And um, like, you know, but you'll hear poker players talk about it, like no bad beats. Like you just, a lot of winning is actually just surviving for yeah. a long period of time. Yeah. Um, and there's, I, Unfortunately, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, um, there's going to be a lot of people that don't survive the next 12, mm -hmm. 24 months because right. things are going to be harder and, and really just different, right? It's actually just yeah. different. It's going to require a different skill set to be successful over the next year or two than it required, than the skill set that was required for the last couple of years. 
And so um, I think a lot of people are going to have an opportunity to be faced with a similar opportunity that like you've had, we, we talked about when you felt like a failure at the, at yeah. the, the productivity team leader, team leader role, or like I had when the market shifted in 2012, 2013, uh, and so many others, like, I think we're going to have an opportunity. And I think the real question is going to be, how do we respond to that? And so mm-hmm. if I, what I would love crystal is just your take on that, like to the person who maybe they already realize that's coming or they're about to, and they'll think back to this conversation What's the advice you you would give somebody who is facing that? Dang, I feel like a failure right now. The market is hard. Mm-hmm. It's definitely changed. Um, what do you say to that person? I think it matters about who, who you surround yourself with. Where is, who are you in alignment with? Right? Like, are, where's, where's your, first of all, like, where's the company that you're at and where's their trajectory going? Number one. And number two, you know, how important is it to you? Like how committed is, are you to achieving the outcomes and the results that you want? And then get yourself around the people who are going to help you get there, whether that's maybe joining a team, uh, maybe that's hiring a coach, getting a mentor. I think a lot of people think that when they cut back on expenses, it's you know, to not invest in themselves. Like they think they're not thinking long-term, like, oh, I have to invest more money if I join a team. Well, that takes a lot of money. That's not a long-term thinking. That's actually a lack mindset. I think it, we think, can think right now with abundance and not with hope, but more like opportunity and say, okay, what are the things that I need to be doing and who do I maybe need to be in partnership with to take my business to the next level? Because it will be a little bit of a scarcity mindset for a lot of people that are going to leave. So yeah, either we jump in and we take the opportunity for the people leaving. Um, but what I would say is, is that fear is normal. And so give yourself that grace. Like our minds were hardwired naturally to like protect ourselves from these kinds of things. So, you know, if you're thinking about going back and getting a job, like think about like how ultimately happy we're going to be. You know, I have, I have a friend here um, in San Diego and he's, he's Indian and um, he, his name's Mahi and he's an engineer out of Dubai actually travels back and forth. And he said, you know, why we're one of the richest cultures in the world is because we play it safe. And he's like, we do a lot of technical and engineering and we, but we don't often follow our dreams, you know? And so what I would say is like, cut back on expenses, borrow money if you need to. Um, what are you willing to sacrifice right now in order to make it through? And and who can maybe help you? There's going to be people who are really going to survive and do really well in this next couple of years because they leaned in and they took advantage of the opportunity and with the right people. Yeah, no doubt. There, there will most definitely be, um, that's good, good thoughts or good, or good advice there. What, so kind of in the same regard, like, what are you most excited about for you personally, like in your business? And I know your business office, you mentioned getting licensed in California. And so starting to sell there as well, I got to imagine as part of the plans for 2023 and beyond. Um, I know you spend a lot of time coaching other agents as well. Like, what are you, what, what's, what's in the plans for your, your immediate uh, in near term future. Yeah. So I'm excited really for the personal growth and the leadership opportunities to open up. I'm having conversations about recruiting and bringing, you know, the opportunity to build uh, revenue share and residual income in my life and also to help other people do that. Right. So um, some people are, you know, a couple of friends of mine, they're 55, maybe they own their own brokerage or 44 and they've got a 10 year old and they're kind of scared right now. Like, Hey, the 2021 was amazing. And now I'm kind of like going, Oh shit. Like, what am I going to do next? You know? And so for me right now, I'm excited to help those people to give them hope and to give them kind of a, 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 a trajectory and a plan as a coach and help them reach their goals and fill their deltas. And for me to grow as a coach and to get more clients and bring more people into the real estate industry and just keep building that community right now, I think really with this shift is such a big opportunity. And uh, I moved to San Diego for that reason. I was you know, in a small town that was used to the same business, you know, which is amazing. I'm so thankful, but yeah. it's like nine, 10 years of the same business. I was like, this is absolutely amazing. Like, but I know there's more. Um, and so that's why I'm here. What I'm excited about is being in a new city and, and just opportunities being endless and and spreading that joy to other people. What I, you know, what I love about real estate is when you understand the principles of how to be a successful realtor, 
and real run a real estate business is you literally you have you actually have the um the confidence and the skill and the ability yeah. to like, literally get up and go somewhere like I, I i i know i feel the same way like you can make me move to any other city in america yeah. and plant me down and look up and i'll have a high producing bu- business within a year guaranteed like because i know how to yeah. do it literally there's a formula there's a way to do it um and that which is cool because it just provides an opportunity for people that want to be able to follow a system yeah. you don't actually have to be it's not like there's always luck involved when you have success, but there, yeah, there's things that you can do to make sure that stuff lines up for you. And that's one of the coolest mm-hmm. things I think about our business. I agree with that so much. I agree. Awesome. Well, um, what else, anything else we should cover today? I, I do want to ask actually, before we do that, yeah. um, where, what's the best place for people to reach out to you? So if someone wants to either just like follow you on social, kind of catch up with what you're doing, or maybe reach out and have a conversation, how, what's the best way for that to happen? Yeah. So you can follow me at inspire your why on Instagram. And also you can go to uh, winning in real estate book.com. If you want a little copy of my book that I wrote on strategy and winning in real estate. That's, that's okay. Well, so we'll put those both in the notes uh, The yeah. inspire your why and then winning in real estate book.com. Yes, um, sir. Anything else? What should I have asked you that I didn't? You know, um, right now, I guess I would just say my mantra right now is um, I'm choosing courage, uh, you know, choosing to be brave. I'm choosing courage over fear right now. And I think that um, if people who are, you know, like you said, what would you say to someone in the industry right now? Like if you're afraid of making moves and you're not making any moves, make a move because that's important, right? Like just make one, Um, but don't be too afraid. Yeah. Make, make a decision. And, and um, because, you know, I play chess, I love chess. And even a pawn that's moving forward is a pawn in promotion because when they get to the other end of the board, they can become a more powerful piece. And so I think that moving is really important having the courage to just show up even in the hard times and to surround yourself with people who are going to help you believe in yourself and you're going to have bad days. And so making sure that you're, you realize that you're human and that you give yourself grace and just show up anyway and uh, be unapologetic. I think one of the things that's really resonated with me right now is, is Dustin running on saying, be, be unapologetically you yeah. because it allows other people to show up and be themselves. Um, and so that's what I kind of want to say right now is just be courageous. And, you know, it's funny because I hear people say a lot, like, what about the haters? And what about what people think? Like, and people will say like, I don't give a fuck what people think. I don't care. You know? And I I agree with that. And there's also a lot of psychology studies that say that we're naturally like wired to kind of care what people think. Clearly. And so, right. And so, but I think that for me, like I value people's opinion that I value and, and I don't, always like maybe like we'll take like maybe doesn't always mean I'm going to do something with it <laughs> okay like I'm stubborn doesn't mean I'm always going to take their advice but I appreciate it and I do value like if I'm going to make a big decision especially financially or I've made a mistake like I value those people's opinions so wow. I guess I would say is like the haters are important too to like listen to what they have to say because maybe there's some value in it maybe there is some relevancy in it like awesome. if something yeah. pisses you off, like there might be some relevancy. So either figure it out and maybe, oh, hey, thank you for that, actually, hater, and like fix it. Or that's just their perception and that point in time. And that's okay. And look, the whole thing that resonates with me, I think the most is, and it's kind of cliche, but like, it's not, it doesn't matter what their opinion of me is. Yeah, it's well, none of my business what their opinion business. of me is. It's none that's, of my business. That's their business. So they're entitled to their opinion. So, you know, right now, make a move. And, you know, try not to weigh too many of other people's opinions, because look, if you're not getting your ass kicked and you're not showing up and being brave, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Uh, it's so good. I, you know, it's easy to say, you know, I don't care what anybody says. And I, I definitely operate in that mode a lot. And yet it's not, it's good to pay attention because if it, because if a lot of people are saying the same thing um, and it pisses you off, then there could be some truth to it that you probably aren't ready to face. Yeah. And if you're just saying stuff that's just like hater stuff, it should literally just, it'll just roll right off your back. Like you don't care about it. Yeah. And so it's important to, I think, to pay attention to how you respond, not that's necessarily right. to what the haters are saying, but to how you're responding to what they're saying to then figure out if you need to go deeper on that. And um, 
I think that's a, that's a really, really excellent point. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that I started off with my sister's story and humor with life is short, you know, and so if you can just disarm yourself sometimes with humor and have fun and be creative in your business and surround yourself with people who care about you, then life's good, man. That's so true. That's such a good, um, that's, that's that's such a good point. We're going to wrap on that. Um, I love your energy. I love the way you give to other people, uh, and are always willing to share guys. If you don't follow crystal, go do it again. Uh, her handle is her handle and website for the book she wrote are in the show notes and uh, crystal. Thanks for being a guest on the show. Thanks for having me, Kevin. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. All right, guys, we will see you next week on the Kevin and Fred show.